Coming up on Focal Point, the road to the final four for Michigan State Spartans starts 538 miles from home in Iowa, and we take you to Des Moines for game one. Have any dietary restrictions? An allergen-free dining hall may be coming to campus. Plan on traveling to Europe? Here is one more thing you'll have to do to get there. The new tax system didn't just change how much money people get back, it changed how they get it. Focal Point starts now. Welcome to Focal Point, I'm Rudolph Sinaida. And I'm Tony Black. Happy March Madness, everyone. Yes, it is here, and we have full coverage of the Spartans on the road in Iowa. But first, under current policy, U.S. citizens can travel to Europe for over 90 days with just the U.S. passport. But in 2021, travelers will need additional documentation. This is what you'll need to know to avoid headaches when traveling abroad. The airport usually isn't a picture of pure relaxation. Thank you for flying from Lansing's Capital Beacon International Airport. There's lots to think about. Does your bag have a tag? Should I buy food for the trip? How early should I get there? And now, when traveling to Europe, you'll have one more thing to remember. Uh, don't forget to do them. <laughs> One more piece of identification, starting in 2021, a required travel authorization form. The European Union is going to have a travel authorization process. So when you're packing all your travel essentials, don't forget your passport, your ID, and the travel authorization form, which is good for three years. According to the information provided by, by the European Union, it should take about 10 minutes to do the application and 95% of people are going to be approved. It's an online process. Up until now, you've never needed anything like that. That should be easy to get. Looks very simple. It looks like it would be online. It looks like it'd be a matter of minutes to try to take care of it. It's just registering yourself. And it'll be the part of your traveling that doesn't cost too much. Actually, it's four euros to apply, and then it's another 10 euros to complete the application. Which is about 16 US dollars. It will be a very nominal amount of money. It's all about safety. I think that the European Union has decided that this is a good way to address those um, uh, people that are coming into the country that mean to do harm to others. It's just a matter of identifying who's traveling and where. So if you're planning that trip to Germany or France, you'll want to add one more thing to your list, a travel authorization form. U.S. citizens will not be required to apply for a European Union visa, only the authorization form, which is less complicated and less expensive. The April 15th tax return deadline is right around the corner. And while the changes in the tax code may be confusing for some, tax preparers are working hard to help ease the confusion. In the basement of his one-story home, you can find Milton Price's shrine to the Corvette. You know, they say you never lose on a Corvette. He's owned seven of them in his lifetime. That one I never raced. Not only is his basement a place to look back on his days behind the wheel, it's where he spends his days, behind a desk. 1040, I think that's the software I use. It's the headquarters of his one-man band, MJP Tax Services. Well, okay, why don't you, what, what's a good time for you? It's tax season, the busiest time of the year. 450 clients busy. Well, my people are getting about the same. Basically, everybody getting about the same or a little, maybe a little bit more back. But he's not racing through 1040s this year. A lot more paperwork. I'm going through more paper than I did before. Under the new 2018 tax laws, tax preparers like Price are seeing more regulations than previous years. I could be fined over $2,000 on one tax return. They got more fines and penalties out there on the tax preparer. And he's not too fond of the new system. Yeah, I'd go back to the old one in a minute. His clients may see the opposite. Now they're getting a better tax return back. The new tax laws means price is buried under a lot more paperwork. For some of us, it could mean less back in our refunds. But until the season is over, for him, it means less time with these. Of course, you can get tickets with them. I've got a couple. <laughs> The IRS says the average tax return is 8% lower compared to this time last year, and the number of refunds issued also dropped almost 25%. European Union, leaders are, European Union leaders are discussing whether and how to approve a request to delay the Brexit process submitted by the British Prime Minister. 
Brexit, a combination of Britain and exit, would mean the United Kingdom would remove itself from the EU. A referendum in June of 2016 voted on by everyone in the UK of legal age saw the majority of UK residents voting to leave the EU. The leave is scheduled to take place March 29th, 2019 with or without an exit deal. News broke last night as EU leaders agreed to Britain's request for an extension as they negotiate a deal for the UK to properly exit the EU. After a lengthy discussion, the Council today also agreed, subject to a successful vote next week, that in order to provide time for the UK Parliament to agree and ratify a Brexit deal, the date of our departure will now be extended to the 22nd of May. An extension is possible, but some EU leaders doubt a deal will get done in time, meaning the UK would no longer be included in the EU. It was cold and rainy all day Wednesday, but that didn't stop MSU graduate students from making their voices heard. Members of the Graduate Employees Union rallied at The Rock this week to protest what they say are unfair wages. The union is currently negotiating their next contract, hoping for a 30% increase, money they say will help them earn a living wage while trying to earn their graduate degrees. They say with their proposal, it would cost the university $4.5 million or 0.16% of the total yearly operating budget. GEU President Nicholas Rowe said this rally will prove that this is more than just talk. They want action. Having all these people together um, meet in one place like kind of serves as a reminder of members that, you know, we do a lot of really, really important work here um, and we should be paid like it. Besides wages, among the items the GEU is asking for are more protections against discrimination and harassment, along with guarantees for reasonable teaching loads and course schedules. For a complete summary of the GEU bargaining platform, you can go to geu at msu.org. Big dreams often come in little packages. Focal Point's Alyssa Burr is here to tell us the story of two local Girl Scouts who have those big dreams. Alyssa? Ruta, some have dreams about eating those delicious Thin Mints or Samoas this time of year when Girl Scouts are out selling their famous cookies. But two local Girl Scouts have another dream of selling a lot of cookies. Book five, book six, book seven, book eight, book nine. It's a typical day at Malia and Madison's house after school. So what should we read now? Five-year-old Madison and her seven-year-old sister Malia are always busy. But they will make sure to set aside time to sit down with a good book. The, grass. the girls spend most of their free time on weekdays brushing up on their reading skills. But on weekends, it's strictly business. Some girl scout cookies. The business of selling Thin Mints and Savannah Smiles. Malia and Madison sell Girl Scout cookies. They don't eat their profits. I can only have, have the toffee tastics because they're good to free. Their food allergies prevent that but it makes it easier to focus on business. Even though they're joint efforts, they work together at the cookie booths. Mom Nikki Frazier knows their drive. This year, they want to sell more cookies than anyone in Michigan. Last year, Malia did sell the most cookies of anyone in Lansing. It feels fun to be the top seller. This time around, she's teaching Madison the ropes of what it takes to sell cookies. With only a couple weeks left in the cookie season, the girls are just shy of their 1900 box goal. 1900 is a, it's a it's a lofty goal. Nikki, not only mom but troop leader, says she never pushes them too hard, and she says even if they don't make their goal, they learn something more important. And I said, you know what? The most important thing is is that you did your best. But cookie season isn't over yet, so for now, you can find the girls selling their Samoas and do -si dos and taglongs on the weekends in Lansing. For One now, day, it's back to the books. Rolled away from home. She did not know. Such smart and determined little girls, let's keep our fingers crossed that they make their goal. When you're all done, I think I have a box we can share. <laughs> all right, Alyssa. Last week, we covered the unraveling admission scandal and what MSU had to say about it. Here are a few updates. University of Southern California has placed holds on students' accounts who may have been part of the admission scandal ring. This will prevent students from signing up for classes and accessing their transcripts. Aside from USC, UCLA, Stanford, Georgetown, and Yale all have students accused of cheating the system. Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin appear in court a week from today along with 50 other parents involved in the scandals. Laughlin's daughters Olivia Jade and Isabella Giannulli have dropped out of USC. The beauty tra brands Tresemme and Sephora have ended their sponsorship partners with Olivia Jade. Well, did you hold your breath? 
I think all of Ben Michigan did. Of course, we're talking about the Spartans near catastrophe at the hands of the Bradley Braves in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And we were there. Guys, it was a crazy day here on Thursday for Spartan Nation. Yeah, Bradley really had a home crowd advantage here. Gave MSU a real good scare, but the Spartans are able to prevail. Michael will have more on Tom Izzo and the team as they get ready for Saturday against Minnesota. Right, and while the game was going on, Griffin took a tour of Des Moines. He's going to show us the city and the road trip it was to get out here. Yeah, and then finally our third counterpart, Joey Ellis, doing a story on the 64 mascots that make up the NCAA tournament. Michael, do you know what a Bellican is? That sounds crazy. Yeah, so he'll have the answer to that and more later in the show. Guys? Thanks, Griffin, Michael, and Joey. We look forward to hearing what you have for us later in the show. Coming up, there's a new add-on to campus that will help students out with dietary restrictions. Focal Point will be right back. Students are crucial to WKR success. It's a great opportunity for the students to learn, and it's a great chance for us to teach students so that they're ready to go out into the real world. Students are the heartbeat of WKAR. Backstage Pass has given me hands-on experience working with the team and working with the equipment. Going to class, you learn all this stuff, but then being able to apply it while you're a student as well is really fantastic. It's been awesome seeing a project go from just emails to a full production day where we have bands coming in. It's been awesome to see that bigger picture come to life. I'm always excited when I get to work on live productions, especially backstage pads. Having this knowledge at my disposal while I'm in college is really beneficial to what I want to do after I graduate. It's extremely important to have students because it helps with the success of WKR and public broadcast as a whole. The opportunities are endless for students here. Welcome back. The MSU Board of Trustees are disappointed after few people showed up for a town hall meeting. Trustees Brianna T. Scott and Kelly Tabay expressed their frustration at their first town hall meeting since becoming part of the board. Audience members say all the empty seats shows the communication barrier between the campus community and the trustees still exists. Some say the meeting wasn't publicized enough. I think the more that they see our faces, you know, walking around the International Center, going in the dorms, go, you know, walking around on campus, actually showing up at the ASMSU meetings, the more people will realize this is consistency. This isn't just a one-time thing. These people really care. It was the first in a series of campus town halls that trustees Scott Tabay and Kelly Tebay plan on having. The Michigan State Muslim Student Association holds a vigil from The Rock. And did you take the survey? Michigan State reaches out to students, faculty, and staff to talk about sexual misconduct. Tia Riddick joins us in the newsroom for those stories and more in our campus report. Tiara? Thanks, Tony and Ruta. Coming this fall, a new addition to a campus dining hall is good news for some students who couldn't enjoy the dining halls before. This is a new age EpiPen. Red safety guard. So I'm allergic to peanuts and all tree nuts, so pretty much everything. Living with a food-related allergy can be difficult. And there's definitely been times where I've had to avoid eating something, um, or I've had to kind of avoid a like kind of like a dining hall area because they they're serving something that I can't eat. MSU student Isabella Oletti has been dealing with her food-related allergen since she was little. Um, so it's been since I was a baby. I actually, my parents gave me something that, um, that had nuts in it and I had to be rushed to the hospital. Um, so it is a pretty severe allergy and I've just always known. But Michigan State's culinary services team is making it easier for people like yeah. Isabella. <laughs> and this is it, a new allergen-free dining hall. All the dining halls on campus are very conscious of the allergens. The new addition to campus will be located where the Riverwalk Market is now, right? inside of Owen Hall. We're going to have Owen be allergen free from the top eight plus sesame and gluten. Uh, it will be certified free from, so from our counters to the back dock, nothing uh, will contain any of those allergens. This is an example of something that somebody like Isabella could never touch, but that is soon to change. Uh, a huge thing here at Owen right now is the Garden Walk Station, so we don't want to take that away, but we have to figure out a way to do it without soy, sesame, wheat, gluten, eggs. The new allergen-free dining hall will open this fall. 
It'll be really nice to see um, everything labeled and there'll be options for people like that. The new dining hall will still include all your down-home needs like things such as street food and home-style meals. After the deadly mosque shootings in New Zealand last week, MSU students gathered to honor the victims and their families. The vigil put on by the MSU Muslim Student Association was a time for prayer and reflection. Organizers say even though it was an emotional event, their goal was to unite everyone in love and solidarity. Speakers included representatives from different student organizations, community leaders, professors, and religious leaders. It was just like complete horror and frustration that nothing seems to be getting better and in particular in New Zealand which is known for its safety that it would happen there is just like it just shows how much work we have to do. The lone gunman from Australia has been arrested and charged with murder. The shootings left 50 people dead and 20 seriously injured. Now New Zealand's Prime Minister promises a ban on all military style semi-automatic guns and hopes to have it in place in 10 days. MSU students, faculty, and staff are being asked to participate in a new survey to help administrators understand campus climate. The seven-part online survey called No More at MSU is an effort to get a better understanding of how the community feels about the university's sexual misconduct policies. Participants are being asked yes or no if they agree or disagree on topics like relationship violence, how they feel being at MSU, and their opinion on university leaders. The MSU Relationship Violence and Sexual Misconduct Expert Advisory Work Group created the optional confidential survey after different campus groups wanted more information on where things stand on campus. We're really interested in being able to use the results of this survey to influence um, and shape our prevention programming on campus, to help us think about what policies are needed or what changes to policies need to be made. The data will be analyzed over the summer and a report will be filed in the fall. Those results will be used to potentially make or change policies. That's all we have on campus. I'm Tiara Riddick. Thanks, Tiara. Well, you saw Griffin Stroyan and Michael Epps earlier. Joey Ellis is also in Des Moines, Iowa for the men's basketball tournament. Hi, Joey. Hey, guys. I'm outside the Wells Fargo Arena, where it'll play host to the first and second round of the NCAA tournament. I'll show you how the Spartans fared in their first round and more after the break. My earliest recollection of Michigan State was actually seeing the marching band. Um, I'm a proud member of the Spartan Marching Band. I served as the drum major at Michigan State for four years, and it was really one of the highlights of my college career, um, and the opportunity really set me up for uh, success in not only my career, but also being a leader in my company. The program I was able to study allowed me the opportunity to understand a variety of the communication disciplines, and I think it was that opportunity to be able to understand journalism, to understand public relations, uh, other aspects of communication, and certainly advertising, um, really allowed me to create kind of a, a general understanding and really paved the way for me to go and create and invent and build the career that I wanted to pursue. I love that we have students at Michigan State who are eager, um, they're thirsty for knowledge, they have the tenacity to want to go and roll up their sleeves, they want to learn the trade, they want to learn the craft, um, and I just feel like it's my responsibility to be able to share with people the success I've created and be able to open doors for them to create the same. Welcome back. So how about we take you to Iowa? We have a team of reporters covering Michigan State's road to the Final Four. Of course, that road nearly ended before it started, but we begin with Joey Ellis. The Michigan State basketball team boarded a plane, flew 580 miles right here to Des Moines, Iowa, to take on the Bradley Braves in the first round of the NCAA tournament. It was supposed to be easy. It wasn't quite as easy, but Michael Epps has been covering the Spartans all year and has more from the back and forth affair. Michigan State has had quite an emotional few weeks from losing players to injury to winning its conference and beating its rival. They came into this first round game against Bradley just flat. 
Bradley came into this game with all the energy. You know, they had a lot of great fans, and uh, yeah, I kind of did feel like some other fans were, and uh, you know, that's the NCAA tournament for you. Michigan State came off an emotional win over Michigan in the Big Ten tournament final and simply didn't play well early. It was a, it was a completely different vibe out there because they were playing for their last. And man, they, and they played like it was their last. So they played hard, they made shots, they defended, rebounded. So credit to them, man. It's, it's, it's sad it got to end like this, but I'm glad we're moving on. But it was Big Ten Player of the Year Cassius Winston that came to the rescue yet again, making the big plays down the stretch that the other players weren't making. Uh, he's just that, that guy who can take over and, you know, is not afraid to take over, you know. He's got that ability and he helps us and he sees it. Like whenever we're in a slump and we're not hitting shots, he just takes over. I'm, I'm going to score these next two, three possessions for us and bring the lead back up. Next up, the Spartans will take on a familiar opponent, fellow Big Ten rival Minnesota. We're in the round of 32 now, so hopefully we get into 16. And the only matchup between these two teams was a Michigan State win in East Lansing. That'll be a fun game to watch. But this has been a long road for the Spartans, and I mean literally. Griffin Stroin made the drive from mid-Michigan to the cornfields of Iowa and found a pit stop that feels like a mall. This time of year, the Michigan State basketball team is always on the road. But fans like TJ George make these trips too. In this case, 540 miles. It's pretty long, but uh, honestly, it wasn't too bad. And while fans are on their way to the country's largest basketball tournament, why wouldn't they stop at the world's largest truck stop? Mm -hmm. well, the world's largest truck stop here in uh, Walcott, Iowa. Can't pass that up. That's Daniel Kalajcik, a diehard Michigan fan from Warren. But he's not on the road to watch the game. He drives to earn his living. I've been driving for uh, about three, four months now, since about November this past year. This Michigander has driven this route a lot. Iowa is about, in that span, about, say, like the sixth or seventh time. But this weekend, he'll probably be joined on the road with more people from Michigan. Now, obviously, this trip to Des Moines was a lot longer for Michiganders compared to last week's trip to Chicago. But that didn't stop Spartan fans. Wouldn't miss that for the world. So how can we not go? For a while in the Spartans' first game, it looked like all of Michigan would be driving back home. But they finally won. And there's other great things to do. They can visit our science center. They can visit our historical uh, building. They can see our beautiful capital in the back. Now, fans will get to enjoy Iowa, at least for another day. There's just a ton of things to do. In Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Griffin Stroyan, Focal Point News. Looks like Griffin had an interesting road here to Iowa, and certainly all the roads to the tournament are paved with different characters, like a billiken. Does anybody know what a billiken is? The 64 team field also features 64 mascots. The Spartans aren't the only mascot in Des Moines, Iowa this weekend. Just ask the thousands of fans who came through Thursday's Hoops and Hops Fan Fest. So I am from Kansas originally, grew up in Topeka, but I'm a transplant to Des Moines. Seven other schools are also in Des Moines for the first and second round of the NCAA tournament. I've never been to Iowa and I've been in Des Moines, so I'm pretty excited to be here. Which gives this city a chance to showcase itself just a little bit. We're known for a lot of our uh, smaller media markets, and so having you know the tournament here for the second time, it's a big deal. There are cyclones here. A cyclone in the Midwest. I mean, it dominates everything, right? There are gators. The way we like to say at Ford is that you know most most mascots, you know, they're all built and stuff. But uh, Albert's got that like like dad kind of thing going on. Does anybody even know what a billikin is? Oh yeah, the St. Louis, the like the mystical creatures. And there's even the fans still not quite sure of their rooting allegiances. I usually side with Michigan. I got a buddy that I played high school with on Michigan, but um, my sister recently graduated from Michigan State. So. But. Fandom aside, the city of Des Moines serves as the centerpiece for one common interest. It's just a great environment. I mean, it's that collegiate vibe away from home. You know, it's everybody's here for one reason and to support their squad and and just enjoying a, a friendly rivalry with different schools. At least I'm not the only one who doesn't know what a billikin is. But that's not just all the action happening here in Iowa. Honda Carter reports from back home in East Lansing that the school spirit was still alive and well. Not everyone drives across the country to watch the Spartans play. I got here about probably 12.30. While some fans will drive or fly, some prefer their favorite chair at the bar. Sit in the same spot, order the same stuff. For Tim, this is the usual. I've lived here all my life. I've always, I've lived, I grew up in these things. So. 
But at the Hall of Fame Cafe, it's sort of a big deal. I'm a Michigan State fan, first and foremost. Joseph? He's been a Spartan since birth. And I, I just love the place. And sometimes I can't help myself because of that. As you can see, it gets pretty busy here on game day in East Lansing. These Spartans are in the March Madness spirit, and they're taking over restaurants. It can get a little stressful when it's busy and there's a wait, but it's fun to work here. It's always loud, and there's lots of people. It's where Spartan fans can share more than a beer. It's got a good atmosphere. Most importantly, it's where they can cheer on their favorite team. I hope they'll go all the way. I'm relieved at the win. And he's slanting. Who am I to doubt these guys? <laughs> I'm Honda Carter, Focal Point News. Next up for the Spartans is a second round matchup against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. That's all for now. For Griffin Stroyd and Michael Epps, I'm Joey Ellison, Des Moines, Iowa, Focal Point News. All right, thanks guys. Have fun over there. If you're thinking about heading to Iowa, you have some time. The Spartans take on Minnesota at 7.45 p.m. tomorrow. Well, sure, that'll be entertaining, but if you need some more entertainment, there are several new movies coming out this weekend. Yes, Honda Carter has an exclusive look on what's new in theaters. Thanks, Ruta and Tony. Now, you, now it may be springtime, but it's still chilly enough to get away and head to the movies. Here's what you can look forward to hitting theaters this weekend. There's a lot of imbeciles out there. Direct Across Concrete focuses on veteran cop Anthony and rookie Brett. They are suspended from their jobs after video footage surfaces of them assaulting a suspect. This is a bad idea. It's all kind of The officers dive into the criminal underworld to get the satisfaction they think they deserve. We have the skills and the right to acquire proper compensation. Us follows the life of Adelaide Wilson, a wife and mother who turns to her childhood beach house. He's kidding, right? He's Adelaide has a horrible hey, feeling that this getaway will turn oh, yeah. into her worst night. Nice, Jason. Jason? Jason? Where were you? I didn't her fear becomes her reality when four evil clones of the Wilson family set out to destroy them. <laughs> There's a family in our driveway. It's probably the neighbors. But y'all scared of a family? Hi, can I help you? Zora. That's your movie made it for Focal Point News. I'm Honda Carter. If you want to get crazy, we can get crazy. The time has finally come for East Lansing and the Wharton Center. The long wait for tickets for the famed Broadway show Hamilton will go on sale tomorrow. I'm past patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action's an act of creation. I'm laughing in the face of casualties. Starting at 10 a.m. Saturday, there are three ways to get tickets. Online at WhartonCenter.com or in person at the Wharton Center ticket office. Wristbands will be distributed from 8 to 9.30 a.m. You can also grab them over the phone at 1-800-WHARTON. There's a limit of four tickets per household address. Prices range from $73.50 to $163.50 with a limited number of $398.50 premium seats. The show runs from May 14th to June 2nd. To find out more info, go to WhartonCenter.com. That's all we have for entertainment. I'm Honda Carter. Thank you, Honda. And that's all we have for this edition of Focal Point. I'm Rudolph Sinaida. And I'm Tony Black. We'll leave you now with the sounds of the MSU Wind Symphony. Thank you. 